evening, Noswatai Khi, BBC Wales, can reveal the pilot of the plane which crashed on its way to Cardiff, killing footballer Emiliano Sala, was concerned about the state of the aircraft. In a recorded conversation obtained exclusively by BBC Wales, the day before the crash, David Ibbotson outlined a litany of faults he experienced on the first leg of the journey from Cardiff to Nantes. The plane crashed into the English Channel in January 2019 while making the return trip. Hayley Thomas reports. Nearly four years on from the crash, we now know so much more about the circumstances which led to the death of Emiliano Sala and David Ibbotson. And now, for the first time, we can hear from the pilot himself. I was probably one of the last people to talk to him just before he took off from Nantes um, on the trip to Cardiff. I'd had trouble with an insurance company and so I wanted to record some of the conversations. The app was still on the phone, so I had a look and, and sure enough it was still there and it recorded conversations that we'd had. In that conversation, David Ibbotson listed a number of problems he had with the plane on the flight from Cardiff to Nantes. I picked a football up from uh, Cardiff uh, that he should have been brought from Nantes. I think it was about £20 million pounds worth of something. He entrusted me to uh, pick him up in a doggy's garage. Normally I have the life jacket set in between my seats, but tomorrow we're wearing the life jacket, that's for sure. This aircraft, I think it's got to go back in the hangar. Might be your last chance to have a good old chat with me, a good old boat with me tomorrow. So I'm sort of like mid-channel, and bang. That, that man at the occasion, you've got like, it's like a mist, but it's, you know, every so often you can feel it. Very, very low for, throughout the air, but then it went flying along, and then, ooh, bang, yeah, it's like on the front, but everything's forward, and uh, checking your parameters, everything was good, and it was still flying, but you did, you know, it sort of like got your attention, you know what I mean? Right, so that was the whole case, I carried on, got into France, and this, and the aircraft, off from way, and down the taxiway, and I'm trying to turn left, no left with the brake pedal. Despite those concerns, the plan to fly the Piper Malibu plane didn't change. David Ibbotson wasn't a commercial pilot and should never have set out on a journey in the dark. Hours after these CCTV images were recorded, the footballer and pilot were missing. After the initial searches were unsuccessful, £300,000 was raised for a private search. The authorities didn't believe the plane could be found or even if it was found that nothing would be learned. And I didn't accept that, and that's why I volunteered to help the families. We were certain after all of our sonar rows that we had actually found the plane. And that was, you know, a really sad and somber moment for everybody. And I knew that when we got back to land, everything would change. Finding the plane means that we now know so much more about what happened in the final moments of the flight. In David Ibbotson's last radio contact with air traffic control, he asked for permission to descend to avoid poor weather. Then the plane made a series of turns, climbing and descending as it did so. Flying much faster than it was designed to, it soon became unstable, heading towards the channel. A final pull-up maneuver by the pilot to try to regain control created a force so great that the tail broke off. This would have caused the plane to tip placing such a force on the wings, they would have snapped. What happened next is unclear, but from compression damage seen on the plane's wreckage, air accident investigators say it's likely to have hit the water in this position. Emiliano Sala's body was recovered from the wreckage and was found to contain high levels of carbon monoxide. David Ibbotson has never been found. Joining us this evening is Kat Burton, an aviation expert and retired British Airways pilot. Kat, what's your reaction to that audio that we've just heard there? Good evening, Jen. Well, I mean, horrified is the only word for it, to be honest. Uh, there's so much revealing detail coming out from that uh, short conversation. Uh, mainly that I think that David Ibbotson was a victim of this. Uh, he obviously wasn't quite so much of a victim as Emiliano Sala, but nevertheless I see him as a victim of commercial pressure to get the job done. Uh, and that's commercial pressure which is an important part of learning to be a commercial pilot. Uh, when you learn to become a captain in an airline, you are taught about a three-legged stool of responsibility. 
One leg is to your passengers, one leg is to your company, and one leg is to the regulator, in this case, the British Civil Aviation Authority. And if any one of those legs is weak, then the whole store falls over, obviously. And in this case, I think commercial pressure meant that Sir David was concentrating on his responsibility to the company and forgot all about his responsibility to Emiliano and also to the CIA. You mentioned there that you see David Ebertson uh, as a victim also. You know, as an experienced pilot, what are your reflections on his part in, in this tragedy, having heard that audio? Well, he could have prevented it, of course. He could have just walked away from the flight and said, I'm not flying that aeroplane back. Or he could have come clean and said, I'm not qualified to make this flight in the first place. He wasn't a commercial pilot. His instrument rating wasn't current. And he was prohibited from flying at night due to color blindness. So he was in no way qualified to, to fly this flight in the first place. Uh, but with those faults on the aeroplane, particularly the brake fault, I'm a bit less concerned about the bang and the misting which we hear him talk about, uh, those both sound like faults in the pressurization, and he wasn't high enough for that to be a factor. But of course, it could have been a factor in admitting carbon monoxide into the aircraft. And um, we're not sure whether or not he was incapacitated by that carbon monoxide, although Emiliano Sala's body was contain con contained a huge amount of carbon monoxide. They weren't sitting that close together, I don't believe. I believe Emiliano Sala was two rows further back than the pilot. And that's enough difference to mean that we can't be sure that uh, David Ibbotson was as compromised by carbon monoxide as Emiliano was. So although it was almost certainly a factor, it may not have been the major factor. I think his, his lack of experience at night and in instrument conditions are what caused what we call an upset. Uh, for which there's a, a very simple and, and easy process to recover, but it has to be done in the right order. And if it's done in the wrong order, where a pilot perhaps suddenly realizes that he's hurtling towards the ground at much higher speed than he should be, if he then pulls back hard on the stick, which is very much a gut reaction, he can overstress the airplane, as was the case with, okay. with David. Okay, well, Cat Burton, thank you so much for your time this evening. Cat Burton there, um, retired British Airways. I